Welcome to Stave Draws. I'm Stave, a Dutch illustrator and animator. In this video I'm going to tell you something about animating an otter in Anime Studio 11. In a previous video I showed you how I designed the character and I made it for a client. And the otter is going to be a presenter for all the videos. And I'm using live action and the animation of the otter is done in Anime Studio 11. And I started out doing uh, the painting of the otter in Anime Studio because now you can paint with vectors and with the natural brushes in Anime Studio. But I failed miserably and had to change my plan. And in this video I'm going to show you how everything went down and how I finally succeeded in animating the otter and make it look real with the live action footage. I started uh, designing the character in uh, the most simple form and I s first started out uh, just drawing the body of the otter and because the otter doesn't have any clothes on, um, the entire character needed to be done in one piece and I just uh, made several layers and this is the layer of his entire body and here is where his feet will be and the arms will be on a different layer as well. It's the setup of the character you always do on frame zero. So I painted the fur with uh, a natural brush and here you see all the vector points. But I got in quite some trouble because I opened up the first test file I did and this is the file of the otter and I just um, took a screenshot of the background and here it's already rigged so this is the background and I'm just going to zoom in to the otter here you have all the different files and I'm just going to show you the bones because, because I already rigged the character and what you can do with uh, the bones is and vectors is that you can bind the points of your vectors to a bone and, and I had a lot of vectors so I really need to figure out to which bone the, the points would be bound to so you first need to select all the points, all the vector points and with all these, these were a lot of points to bind so I should have known in advance that this, this wouldn't work. I'll just show you what happened. Now you have selected all the vector points you want to bind to this bone. Then you go to the tools panel and here at the bones you first need to select the bone i'm selecting this bone and here you can with this feature with the square with the little bone to it you can bind these points to that bone so now all these points are bound to this bone and I'll show you what happens when you go to your bone layer. And you can see that all the bones you've selected are now bound to this bone. And this is where I made my mistake because I drew the, the fur of the otter too long. So I didn't know where um, the fur would begin and end because I just was painting like I would uh, paint a normal painting and didn't consider uh, that the vector points needed to be bound to a certain bone. So I had to do a redesign of the character and um, I decided that I was going to paint it with real fur so that it would blend better with the background. I redrew the whole character in uh, Procreate 
which is um, an app for iPad and I'm now using the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil and it took a lot of time to draw the fur and uh, I was using photo reference of a, a real fur of, of an otter and this otter always has to pop out of the water and his fur is still a little bit wet and the fur of otters when they're in the water they're very dense and you don't see any structure but I needed the structure to make the character more believable so I imported the uh, file from Procreate and I first um, exported it to Photoshop and in Photoshop I rearranged some things and I also uh, drew um, a very realistic nose using photo reference. When you're using PNGs as files to animate it's always good practice to start on uh, frame zero and on frame zero you always set up your character and I spread them apart so they wouldn't interfere with the body because this is the arm and here's another one and the and the tail of the otter and on frame one you drag all the files together and I'll just zoom in you can do that with reset view so you have your entire scene in front of you and this is the rig so also the arms I painted in Procreate the hands are still vectors so for his face I used smart bones so I could animate it more easily and I could you know animate him just looking around and going up and down and I also used a smart bone for his mouth and I did all the lip syncing by hand because you can also use a script for that but this is more accurate and I already made a, a video about doing smart bones and I'll leave a link in the description box down below it's about uh, a turning of a B. If you watch that you, can, you see how you can make um, smart bones. The nice way of using bones with pixel art is that you can adjust the strength of the bone. Now just go back to frame zero because there is where you can adjust your files and I'm just gonna select the bones and here you have in, in the tools panel you have the bones and you can make a hierarchy of the bones and I think this one is the mother bone and from there on um, they're all linked to this bone. So when you move it around now the fur stretches with it which was a very nice effect to make it more believable and you can change the strength of the bone with the with this button which is called bone strength and you can just play around with it because if, if, if it's too big and you change it then it will affect other bones and the strength of those bones so here's the front shot of the otter and I needed a mask because he appears behind the log and then he jumps onto the log and I'll just go through it and he it's the impact and I use different techniques uh, the the otter is of course animated with the bones uh, in anime studio so I'll just go back and here you see him behind the log and I used a mask for that as well um, this is the group layer and you always need a group to make your mask and this is, this is set to hide all and here you have the file of 
the animation of the otter. Here you have the mask, and which is uh, a mask done in vectors. And the great thing about vectors is that you can animate the vector points. I'll just zoom in a little. And here you see the, the, the vector points. And it just jumps. Here I drag the, the vector or the, the mask down because he appears uh, in front of the log. And then I just set it and leave it here. And in the end of the animation, the otter jumps into the water and then I need the mask again. So I needed to blend the character a little bit more with the background and you can um, make some effects onto your um, layer or group. So I have the, um, this is the layer of the otter and you can also put shadows on it. And what I did was, this is a shadow uh, behind the character and layer shading animated is on your character. And what I did was I made an offset of 30 and I blurred it for 25. And here I um, implemented the color and set it to 59% alpha because you can here adjust the alpha of your shadow. So this is how I made the animation of an otter using live action and Anime Studio Pro to do the animation. If you want to see a more in-depth video, go to Vimeo On Demand, and there you can rent or buy the video, and it's about 41 minutes long. I'll go more into detail about animating and the process of using masks and doing the compositing in Anime Studio Pro. I'll leave a link in the description box down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram. And I'll leave the links in the description box down below. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles.